This mushroom species is called the fairy ink cap. The scientific name for this species is Copernellus disseminatus, and it's considered to be the most attractive in this early stage. And these are slightly older, but they acquire more wrinkles in their caps, and they start to acquire colors as well. So it's all a matter of opinion, but uh, these are slightly older, and you can see that they're starting to take on a different kind of appearance and these are a little bit older as well. Here's an example of a desiccated mushroom that's destined to die. So when the sun strikes on my patio every afternoon it basically dries out, it fries all of the mushrooms in my various pots and the reason there's mushrooms growing is that because I've done a lot of watering from the top for my plants with shallow roots such as these yellow onion bulbs so this is what it looks like when several of them just shrivel up and die and they've been repeating the cycle you know sprouting up overnight especially after I've watered copiously on the top and shriveling up when the sun hits so they tend to do a little better in shade but this is not all that much shade and these plants are somewhat translucent it's uh, hot and dry and this footage was taken in July 2013 in San Diego these are mushrooms that are coming fresh out of the soil and many people like these. They kind of have that fairy-like appearance or you know, that of a ghost or whatever you will. And they're very pale and white before they've acquired colors in the first few hours. So these go by many other names. Um, they're called fairies bonnets and I don't like that name because it uses the word bonnets and that kind of confers the bonnet mushrooms which are the mycena and that's just confusing these are ink caps so here's a close-up of three desiccated dead mushrooms uh, new ones will no doubt sprout up in the following days and these are only the reproductive structures of fungi here's a more mature lone specimen that seems to be drying up you know the edges are kind of frayed but you know it has that kind of uh, ink cap look to it it has a paler spot at the top and it's sort of like an umbrella at this point that's kind of darkening from the top down. Here's a view from another angle. So these mushrooms are small, they're fragile, and they're very delicate. I don't think they last very long at all. And basically they're edible, but most people don't consider these to have any kind of food value because of taste issues. They have no taste really, or nothing worth noting compared to some of the more notable edible species. This is uh, underneath one of my pots in the watering tray and this is basically a dried out mushroom, a fairy ink cap that dried out in a pattern to where it split and flattened out and sort of looks like a flower instead of a mushroom. Mushrooms love these kinds of environments so yes mushrooms can sprout upside down. These are mature fairy ink caps and they have a tan spot at the top and kind of a brownish gray hue to the mature mushroom caps and then grow in dense clusters like this. For this reason this species is also called the trooping ink cap or the trooping crumble cap and that's because it occurs in very very large numbers in the wild on dead logs and such it can occur in hundreds if not thousands in small areas. These troops of fairy ink caps aren't merely growing near the base of my plant stems and thus near the roots for shade protection it turns out that fungal mycelial networks tend to wrap around the roots of plants not only that but they secrete compounds that are antimicrobial in nature the antimicrobial compounds that are secreted by these fungi not only protect the fungi itself from bacterial attack but the plant roots as well thus mushrooms have a mutualistic relationship in which they benefit the plants that they wrap around Right here we're looking at stands of mushrooms that are expiring, although the stalks, the stipes, are still moist in whole water. And you can see the very nascent budding fairy ink caps coming out in a big troop over here. I've done a little bit of research on the internet to get myself reacquainted with mushrooms. I used to have a mushroom field guide when I was a kid, and I knew several mushroom species, although my understanding was very, very limited as a you know six-year-old as it is compared to now so now I know for sure that these uh, mushrooms with their mycelial networks underground are 
actually protecting my plants and not harming them. And that confirms what I thought all along, which is that there's a mutualistic benefit and they don't harm living tissues. So this is a case where I removed a dead leaf on top of what turned out to just be a chunk of dirt that got pushed up by all these mushrooms. So there's multiple generations, I guess, of these reproductive structures, but I'm sure it's all just one big fungal mycelial mat underneath the soil. The fairy ink cat was the first mushroom species to inoculate my ginger germination experiment pot. And those mushrooms that came out of there were very few in number, but they managed to inoculate all of the nearby porch plants. Since mycelial networks of mushrooms inhibit competition from other species and other fungi, I don't think I'll be seeing any other species anytime soon. 24 hours after watering my ginger pot from the top, I saw these mycelial mats just bust out of the soil and I didn't see these yesterday so they're very thick and visible actually and that means they've dominated the entire pot and these are not anything like ginger roots.